Good morning. We're going to continue our discussion of bias by giving some scenarios and uh, what might make a bad sample and why. So, interesting, interested in determining the percent of the population who believed in God, a surveyor stood outside a church on a Sunday morning and asked all of the congregants a neutrally worded question about whether or not they believe in God. Will this survey produce biased results? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely well. Um, the reason it does is this sample, if they're standing outside of a church, it's reasonable to assume that the people who attend the church do believe in God, and that may or may not be representative of the entire population, likely is not. Consequently, the percentage of people who believe in God is prob probably overrepresented, and the people who do not believe in God is likely to be underrepresented. So this is a case of selection bias, which we didn't specifically said, but basically we selected a really poor sample um, and, and is subject to the following bias. Under coverage bias, those who, that do not believe in God are not likely to be at church. All right, so that's why we have selection bias. But there's another type of bias that could have happened. Even though the question is neutrally worded and neutrally worded questions tend to get rid of response bias, so neutrally worded, we might want to make, make that note, neutrally worded questions help with response bias. However, in this particular instance, there is a bunch of peer pressure. If I'm standing outside of church, <clears throat> I may feel pressured to say that I believe in God just because those around me say that they do. So basically, it became the uncomfortable question. Even though it was neutrally worded, it was uncomfortable because of the people around me. All right, so that's one. Look, um, that's one scenario. Scenario two, a lo local school board plans to conduct a survey of parents' opinions about year-round schooling in elementary schools. The school board conducts 500, contacts 500 of the families by mail. All right, the survey question is below. A proposal has been submitted that would require students in elementary schools to attend school on a year-round basis. Do you support this proposal, yes or no? The school board received responses from 98 of the families with 76 of the responses indicating support for year-round schools. Based on this outcome, the local school board concludes that most of the families with a, at least one child in elementary school prefer year-round schooling. So what type of bias is included in the survey? First off, since they gave me a question, I want to look at the, at the question and just determine whether it was neutrally worded. When I read the question, do you support the proposal, and the proposal was um, a, a 10 year round schooling, I'm going, that's pretty neutrally worded. So I'm not worried about response bias in that sense. And then I think, is this a sensitive question where I'm going to want to lie? And the answer is probably not, not that sensitive. Either you want your child or you don't. No one's really pressuring you. So it's not that type of bias. However, we mailed it out to 500 and we only got 98. So 98 responded. So that means we have non response bias going on. In addition, if we mail it out, not everyone has a mailing address. So here's what we have. Non-response bias, only 98 out of 500 families uh, responded to the survey, or 19.6%, that's just the 98 divided by 500. It is likely that the opinions of parents who are most in favor of year-round schools were the ones who responded, and they are overrepresented uh, in the survey. All right, so it sounds like, it looks like, I don't know, but it sounds like we had non-response bias in those who were way in favor of it responded, and those who were meh did not. Can, uh, could we just contact another 500 families and add the data to the original results? In our first video on bias said we cannot um, fix bad data, we have to throw it out. So increasing, uh, so that it would not be increased, um, reasonable to increase the sample um, size because we would still have 402 of the first 500 that did not respond. So you can never fix bad data. You have to throw it out and start over. Name way, two ways 
they could fix the survey. First, the school district could cont uh, contact the 402 families who did not respond and try to get their responses. If they did that, then you would have the 500 responding who were, email who were mailed. That would get rid of that bias because you would receive spy, uh, responses from the entire group. Or the school board could totally throw out the original survey and, and conduct a new survey using person to co person contacts as they knocked on doors or phone calls, et cetera, trying to eliminate the amount of non-response bias. But once again, non-response bias in today's society where we're nervous about answering the phones is a bit, uh, it's, it's rough, okay? So non-response bias is a problem that we have a lot uh, in our society and very difficult for people predicting elections. And since this is an election year, this makes polls very subject, not because they didn't uh, select a good group, not because people, um, not, not because the questions were necessarily response bias, even if they did all that correctly, so many people are unwilling to respond that non-response bias is a major problem these days. All right, we'll do the next set of uh, the next scenario in another video.